If you're thinking about buying an electric vehicle or an EV, this, the Kia e-Niro, in my opinion, right now is one of the best that you can buy. It's practical, roomy, offers seating for five, a 451 liter boot, but crucially, it has a 64 kilowatt hour battery, and that's good enough for a 455 kilometer driving range. And more importantly, it costs almost half that of its premium rivals, like the Audi e-tron and Jaguar I-Pace. Compared to the other Kia Nero models, this electric version gets some slightly different styling. It's got blue accents across the bottom of the bumper. It also has this blanked off grille, and that includes the battery charge port, which is located in here. Now on board, it's a 7.2 kilowatt hour charger, but you can also hook it up to a CCS fast charger. That blue styling continues around the back, and as I mentioned, it's got a 451 liter boot. There's also some storage compartments underneath, although you don't get a spare wheel with this car. And you can increase rear boot space by folding down the rear seats. They have a 60-40 split. In the back, actually pretty good amount of passenger space there's a generous amount of leg room good headroom and even for the person sitting in the middle although the floor is not completely flat it's not going to get in the way of your comfort being a crossover the driving position is quite good you sit a little bit taller and as for the position there's lots of adjustability with the seats and the steering wheel has a good amount of reach and rake with the rotor controller it's really easy to switch between park and drive or indeed back to reverse. All of your other controls are here as well. So you have an electric handbrake, an auto hold function, your heated front seats. There's also a heated steering wheel and you have one of the three driving modes. While it doesn't have the biggest infotainment screen in the world, it is a good system and it's easy to use, including a useful EV function, which gives you a lot of the critical driving data that you're gonna to wanna to know when you're on the move. You can also pair your smartphone and use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. The mostly digital instrument display is very clear and easy to read on the move, gives you all the relevant information you're gonna need, such as consumption, and crucially, how much range you have left in the battery. One of the first things you notice when you drive the Kia e-Niro is the suspension. The ride quality, because of the weight of that battery, it does have to be firmer, and that does impact slightly on the ride. On smooth roads, it's not that much of an issue, but if you're driving on more rural roads where, let's face it, it's more likely you're gonna experience potholes and poor surfaces, that does tend to resonate through the cabin. There's a pretty good suite of driver assistance systems too. Um, they work quite well, especially on the motorway. There's a start-stop system with the cruise control, which is great when you're in traffic. And even on more rural roads, um, where you've just got a center line, it will notice if you start to creep over that and will give the steering a little bit of a nudge. There are three driving modes altogether with the Kia e-Niro, an Eco, Normal, and a Sport. Leave it in Eco will give you the best chance of getting that 455 kilometers of driving range. And having driven a whole variety of different roads from rural to motorway at 120 kilometers an hour and city work, in actual fact, I think most people will probably get certainly upwards of 350 kilometers in everyday use from the battery. Uh, I've experienced closer to 450 actually, um, but a lot of urban driving and city traffic will obviously help that. There are several energy recovery modes that you can choose with the car. These are done by little paddles at the back of the steering wheel. Now you can have absolutely none, in which case the car will effectively sail or freewheel. And that's actually quite a useful way, depending on the topography of where you live, you can actually go quite a distance without needing any throttle input. Most people will probably leave it in the smart mode. Now what this does is effectively allows the car to determine how much energy is being recovered. And it uses that by detecting the distance to the car in front. So for example, if the driver ahead of you is slowing down, it will detect that and start to apply more regen in order to be as efficient as possible and recover as much energy as it can. Now you can, to a degree, have one pedal driving with this car. It's not as good as what you're gonna get in Nissan Leaf where literally you can start and stop the car purely off the throttle pedal. You will still need to apply some brakes uh, 
in this situation, certainly in traffic. And I suppose if there's one criticism of how that automatic function works in this car is that it will start to apply regen, but it can almost lull you into sensing that the car is actually gonna stop as it would with the start-stop function in traffic. So you do have to bear in mind that it's not actually always going to stop the car exactly when you think it will. So that's just something to, I think it might catch some people out initially. Certainly owners will get used to it very quickly, but it's just a point. It's not quite as good as what Nissan have with their e-pedal function. Still, the energy recovery level seems to be very good on it. We tried all the different modes in our time with the car and uh, certainly leaving it in the automatic mode is the one that I found was the most efficient and best. Um, certainly in traffic, it's really quite useful to, to, to use. Now the steering is light, but no lighter than you would expect in any crossover of this kind of size. So that's not really much of an issue. And the brakes, although they are good, you'll actually probably rarely use them. Most people will get used to allowing the regen, certainly to take that initial bite off the brakes as you're slowing down. Aside from that great driving range though, it's a refined car. There's not much in the way of wind and road noise coming through the car. It's what you want in an electric vehicle. And you know, given that this is a crossover, it handles reasonably well, but crucially, it's got a lot of space behind you. And that's what matters. But while the Kia e-Niro might not be the most exciting car to drive, the combination of its practicality and space inside and that great driving range, not to mention its competitive pricing, means that we think it's one of the better electric vehicles that you can buy right now in the market. If you want to know more about this and all of its other EV rivals, remember to head over to completecar.ie. We've got full reviews and details and pricing of all the models there. And as ever, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and thanks for watching.